On April 28th, 1980, the first Game & Watch was released. A very small, thin portable handheld that used the components of a calculator to display both a game and a clock. Created by Gunpei Yakoi, went on to become very popular with a lifespan of 11 years and with numerous game variations in handheld series. One of this series is called the Multiscreen Series. These are Game & Watches that have a clamshell design allowing it to close and protect the two screens it has. The first multi-screen that was released was Auto Panic on May 28th, 1982, and in the same year, Donkey Kong was released, supporting the first modern directional pad. This particular Game & Watch was the most influential one because the D-pad is pretty much on every controller, and the overall design likely inspired the designs of the GBASP and the Nintendo DS, which is a handheld that sold a lot, and I mean a lot of units, and went on to have a big impact in my life, if that wasn't obvious already. Now all of this brings us right back to the Mario and Zelda Game & Watches. Both were released to celebrate their respective franchises and to celebrate the beginning of Nintendo as a video game company. These are very interesting handhelds because Nintendo recreated and modernized the Game Watch on both a software level and hardware of the device. The software of this allows you to switch back and forth between the games, the clock, and the timer. Also, the game you switch from picks up right back where you left off, even if it was in sleep mode. All of this is a seamless experience and there's no problem with it. I find this to be a key feature because this is about keeping the pick up and play as aspect of the Game & Watch. I wish Nintendo would have included more games to make this feature even better. Speaking of games, the games that these Game & Watches have are from their respective franchises. The modern Game & Watch has Super Mario Bros. 1, Super Mario Bros. 2, and a recreation of Ball starring Mario. As to why Nintendo didn't include the American version of Mario 2, it's beyond me. What, you're expecting the bare minimum out of Nintendo? That's not happening here. You get 3 games and that's it. If you want more games, you can always mod- Moving on from that, the Zelda Game & Watch has The Legend of Zelda, The Adventures of Link, Link's Awakening, and a recreation of Vermin starring Link. Unsurprisingly, these Game & Watches have custom UIs for the clock and timer themed around, again, their respective franchise. When the clock and timer are in use, there's a game automatically playing in the background. For Mario's clock is not really a game, but rather a series of little events happening within the clock's UI. It's quite amusing watching all of the little events play out. Whoever made this must have had fun making it, and if they're having fun, I'm having fun. One more thing, the background lighting changes depending on the time you're on. The Zelda Game & Watch has something similar, except Link will literally be doing his own adventure in real time. I mean, if you don't want to play the game, you can always watch it. You are able to briefly take over, but you'll be stuck fighting enemies. It's the same case with the timer too, but you can change the background before starting, and it does a little animation whenever the timer ends. I think the Zelda's UIs are supposed to be more like how the original Game & Watch did it, to where the actual game is automatically playing in the background. Nintendo took a feature that's in the original Game & Watches and made it more appealing to look at. In the original Game & Watches, this time is a small text tucked away, while now in the new ones, it made the clock and timer the focal point, and it gave them dynamic backgrounds. Alongside this, Nintendo added easter eggs to the Game & Watches, all of this goes to show the commitment Nintendo has on making the whole Game & Watch experience detailed and fun. Though there is a missing feature, that being the alarm, so I guess Nintendo likes doing the bare minimum. Other than that, I gotta tell you, even though these aren't the original Game & Watches, they still feel like I'm holding a piece of history. Actually, now that I thought about it, these Game & Watches are a recreation of the widescreen design, not the original one. I know that these Game & Watches are part of a new series called the Color Screen series, but it's clear to me that these Game & Watches are intended to recreate and modernize the widescreen Game & Watch. I wonder why Nintendo chose to go with the widescreen design. What was it the gold color? Yeah, it probably was. Nintendo even went as far as to recreate the original packaging, but now with additional changes and details to fit the new theming. There's a plastic sleeve that showcases what's new, and what came back about it. Even with all of the additional changes, Nintendo still made sure to keep the original look and details of the original packaging. This attention to detail applies to the Game Watches themselves, that look like the widescreen design, but there's actually a lot of changes and I'd say improvements both internally and externally. There's a rechargeable battery that uses USB Type-C to charge, the game A and B buttons are now buttons to switch between the games, the clock, and the timer, making the act of switching between them a further seamless experience. The turbo on now pauses the game, and it can change the volume for the one speaker that can easily be blocked, 
change the brightness of the device, and turn off the auto sleep mode for the Zelda one. You know, for being a small handheld, the screen is surprisingly clear and it can get fairly bright. Definitely a massive improvement over the pre-drawn calculator screen, with no backlight. Additionally, these game watches have better controls to accommodate the new games. Yeah, that's really stretching the definition of new. There's a dedicated D-pad, A and B buttons, and a starter select button for the Zelda one. I find it ironic that the new controls are just the Donkey Kong controls but with more buttons. Goes to show the impact the control layout made. Finally, the game A and B options are now a UI element for the recreated Game Watch games. I'm fascinated that even with all of the new technology these Game Watches have, they still retain the small, thin portable size that the original Game Watches have. I honestly wish more companies would bring back retro consoles and modernize them. Not only would this preserve history, but it would also bring them to a modern standard and to a modern audience that never got to have the experience that the older generation had. As much as Nintendo's changed and improved on the Game & Watch, the core experience is still a game and a watch. I'd say Nintendo did a pretty good job recreating the Game & Watches and modernizing their experiences. Sure, there are some missing features, but Nintendo showed a level of care that I have to commemorate them for that. With this in mind, I kind of want more gamer watches, and if they ever do a multi screen gamer watch with DS games on them, I'd buy that a thousand times. If you like my video, please consider subscribing to see more content like this, and have a good one.